Hello, I'm Miss Emma. I just want to explain to you, parents and teachers, learning support tutors, what monster mapping is in a nutshell. When we speak in English, we're using speech sounds that are blended together. But it happens so quickly, you're not even probably conscious of it. Children can learn to speak in English very naturally but learning to put those speech sounds on paper, to read them and to write using the, the representations of those speech sounds is not natural and it has to be taught for the vast majority of children. They just won't pick it up. It has to be something that is taught explicitly, systematically. Ironically, in a lot of countries of which English is a second language, they use the IPA. The IPA is a way to represent speech sounds just using one symbol. Because think about when we use those speech sounds, if we want to explain which one it is using a letter, it's very, very difficult. If I give you the word scent, you actually don't know how to spell it until you know what it means if you put see it in context. I sent my child to the party. I'm wearing new scent today. I have 50 cents. It's the same word, the same speech sounds, but different representations for those speech sounds because we've spelt it differently is a different uh, meaning. And that's again why English is so complex. When you're spelling a word you're not sure of, you'll think, what are the speech sounds? And then you think of what the representations could be. So children need first to be able to hear that those speech sounds are s to then work out the choices. Here's the SSP Speech Sound King. He puts all of the pictures for the speech sounds in his code mapping book, the dictionary. When we say the word king, we use the speech sounds k, i, n. There are just three speech sounds, even though there are four letters. So although the children will see this in a book, let's say, we want them to see this as k, i, n and how it splits, how the code is mapped. It's really important because we don't just want them to recognize it or to, to read it, we want them to spell it, to know k, i, n and it helps them understand other patterns when they do it this way. Code mapping is the reason why children will know if a word doesn't look right. For example, if they were given a word with two S's at the beginning, how do they know that's not right? Because they're code mapping all the time, they see patterns. The children are investigating the code. They're not taught to learn something as a rule, they're investigating it. So actually the rules that a lot of programs teach, SSP children will pick them apart and say, well actually no, that's not correct in this word, they'll give examples. For example, if there was a rule that you can't have a J at the end of a word, they'd say, well, actually, no, here's an example. I before E except after C. Well, it doesn't work in a lot of words. But the difference is the SSP children will give you examples of the words that that doesn't work in. So after even only one year of SSP, if you start trying to introduce rules, what the children will do, they'll say, no, 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 we don't do rules. We understand how to read and spell. I'll tell you how this rule falls apart and I'm going to investigate the code to show you how this falls down. We're using this problem-solving approach. It's empowering. It gives the children a lot of confidence. Trying to memorize rules doesn't give a lot of children a lot of confidence. We've introduced the speech sound monsters. So there's monster k, i and n. On the outside of the clouds, it shows the explicit teaching, our phonics teaching, but inside are all the representations for that speech sound. They discover those, we're not teaching those explicitly, but they're referring to these clouds every day when they're code mapping. So even though they might learn that I as a representation for I in the green code level, they're exposed to all of them. On the outside, you can see the IPA symbol. They don't have to learn those, but they're looking at those every day. So we had the symbols for k, i, n with the IPA. And this also helps teachers understand linguistics, which is really, really important. Here are the symbols for the word the. Two speech sounds, the, uh, the. 
This is part of the reason why so many countries who speak English as a second language actually do better than us with literacy because they're not taking anything for granted. They're analysing our speech sounds. They're analysing English. They have to because they're learning how to speak it as well as how to read and spell in English. So they understand the word the is two speech sounds, the, uh, and the second is actually a schwa. A lot of our teachers in Australia have never even had training on the schwa, let alone used the IPA, use the phonetic symbols. Many think that words like the can't be sounded out, not realising that of course they can. Every word consists of speech sounds, therefore every word can be sounded out. But to understand this they need to have training and that's why we have the dream teams. Not only are they teaching their children to read and spell really quickly and effectively, I'm actually giving them the things that they didn't get at university and they haven't had as experienced qualified teachers. As soon as the teachers understand about linguistics and they understand how to bridge the gap between speech sounds and how we represent them on paper, everything they do is different. They pay close attention to phonemic awareness, to the phonemic awareness skills of their students because without this, without this ability to identify those smaller parts, the children will not understand phonics, how to represent those smallest parts. They code map, those smallest parts are mapped with a letter or letters used to represent them. Every speech sound is used, every letter is used. So they understand why we're using phonemic awareness and not phonological awareness, which is just a broader term. Phonemic awareness is the skill that is needed. And this is why we do not split words into syllables or use onset and rhyme. We need the children to use those smallest parts. We need them to develop phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is not a natural progression from phonological awareness. You don't teach syllables and onset and rhyme and rhyming and what have you and expect the children to develop phonemic awareness. They are separate skills and this is really important to understand. This understanding can be life-changing for a lot of teachers. They teach differently and every child becomes engaged because they understand what it is they're being asked to do. It is a speech to print approach because writing was created to represent speech, not the other way around. The very busy spider, think of the speech sounds, the uh. Now when they're first starting out, it's very difficult for a lot of adults to hear the difference between that schwa and the uh. So at the very, very beginning on the green code level, we just use the uh monster because we actually introduced the schwa in the purple code level. But in the very beginning when they're just learning sat pin, but they also need to be exposed to other words, we think of it as the a uh, the because it's more natural for a lot of the preppies. V e r e b i z e s p i d a the very busy spider. Look, look at at the uh, the web web. Look at the web. Because we're code mapping for them outside of their phonics teaching, it bridges. It actually bridges the gap between phonics and whole language, because the children can explore real books, write about real things. This child in the first three weeks of prep has spelt the word caterpillar using the monsters doesn't need to understand the letters. In the first three weeks of prep, she's not going to. So the teacher has given her the sound picks, the letters that are used, and she copies those. But she's the one who spelt the word. She spelt cat up it or ah caterpillar. That activity alone is developing the phonemic awareness that is necessary to understand the code, how to use phonics. The children can use the monsters for encoding and decoding straight away and also monster map to read. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah.
A Prep and Year One teachers actually cover every strand of the Australian curriculum for English. This isn't just about phonics and phonemic awareness, it's the whole package. Please look out for the new app for our brain training and duck level videos. The children can work through their phonics teaching, their four code levels, think of letters and sounds, phases one to five, all on the four brain training videos, and also their duck level videos. Think of 400 high frequency words, like the word the, that are code mapped. Codecrackers.com.au